How do I start to learn computer programming? That's a great question that we need to talk about. My name is Shad Sluter, and I'm a professor of computer science and software development at Grand Canyon University. So let's examine this question about where you begin if you're interested in this subject. So let's talk about your skills that you're trying to acquire and how fast you can get into these. So are you trying to create something with just barely enough knowledge and that's why you're asking this question? Or are you trying to get a job and become employable? Or are you looking for a dream career and you're trying to upscale your results? So this scale kind of tells you about how much time from a few months to years of study. And so the question is, where do I begin? So let's check your motivations. Were you asking this question because you have to or because you want to? And so what I'm kind of hoping for is you're further to the right to say, I'm really curious and help me out to find the resources so that I can begin and have a successful career. So to answer your question, where do I learn programming? and Where do I start? Kind of depends on what projects that you're interested in creating. So let's go through a list here of about nine different projects that might be your entry point into creating software. So first of all, a very common project that people are trying to do is create a website. And so they start by learning HTML, which is the code that generates the text you see on the screen. Or maybe you're trying to create Windows applications or you know things that have buttons and graphs and different kinds of games that you would be able to click on. And so we might point you there to the C Sharp language and Visual Studio working with C Sharp. So maybe you're in a course in high school, such as an AP credit level course with Java. This is probably what you're going to look like when you begin. Or maybe you're just interested in the video games that you play. And so you might pick up Unity or Unreal Engine, and then you start to learn programming languages like C Sharp or C++ along the way. And so video games is a great entry place if you're just interested in the curiosity of that. How about if you're trying to create robotics? You might pick up a, a Lego kit. And this is called Mindstorms, where you can learn to program using Lego blocks and sensors. Or maybe more professionally, you work in a, a manufacturing plant and your boss has asked you to become a CLC manager, somebody that is programming these machines and robotics. And if you want to get into that, then I might point you to Arduino kits, which for less than $100, you can build different things, such as a robotic arm or a temperature sensor or some kind of a control that would run your household equipment. Or maybe you're just interested in the love of programming for the logic and the computer science. And for younger audiences, maybe, or even more mature ones that can handle cartoons, uh, Scratch and programs like it are a good introduction. So Scratch was developed by MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, to teach youngsters how to program using this block language. Or maybe you're just working on an app and you want to be able to create the next Android or iOS app. And so you're going to be learning languages that are focused on app development. Another approach that people take to introduction to programming is they go from a mathematics statistician to a programmer working on solutions such as this app here called a, a Shiny app, which takes a set of data and graphically produces uh, maps and graphs. And there's some coding involved in that. So whatever you choose, these types of projects are all going to have some commonality. It's computer programming. And so whether you begin with robotics or with statistics or web pages, you're going to be able to transfer skills if your interests change in the future. So I would encourage you then to pick the category that is either most relevant to your job or the most interesting to you and just start exploring because you can't go wrong. You're going to be able to transfer what you learn into other opportunities. But where are you going to learn? Where are you going to pick up this knowledge? So you're going to have these projects, but how do you figure out how to use them? Do you need a degree? Do you need to do it on your own? How much money is it going to cost? And so let's ask that question next. So the first and the cheapest and the most convenient way to learn is online. So you have a picture here of my web channel. So this is Professor Sluter, and I'm going to teach you how to program web development, databases, mobile apps, and things like that. So if that's your interest, then start right here with me and take the free materials. And if you like what you see, then you can upgrade to a little bit more elaborate and in-depth as well. So there's a lot of authors out there that are doing this. Um, I think you're going to like my style, so check it out. Another option that you might want to consider is to subscribe to a boot camp. Now a boot camp is an intensive one semester or so class. So you don't have to invest an entire four years to get your degree and you might get a job. It's relatively expensive. So a boot camp's gonna cost you somewhere between 10 and $20,000 for that one semester, which for some people is a huge investment and for others, 
it's like, wow, I don't have to spend four years in school. What a great idea. So it's very focused on a single thing. So they might have a, a boot camp on a web development or a mobile development or on a data analysis. So you can pick your interest level and you don't have to take chemistry and physics and all the other college courses that go along with a usual education at the university. However, a boot camp is a less prestigious way to graduate. You probably can get hired if you're good, but just because you completed a boot camp doesn't mean that you're a good programmer. It means you completed the program. So your certificate is as good as the projects that you can create. The next solution is the one that I'm involved with. This is Grand Canyon University. And so it takes a four year commitment to create a degree. So the reason why you would do this is because of its quality. It is rather expensive to go to some universities. However, I think the average person at Grand Canyon only spends about $8,000 a year in tuition. For some of you, that sounds like 10% uh, of what you were planning on spending at some elite schools. And for others, it's still out of the question. But it is definitely a consideration and compare with what you have in your state or in your local area to the private schools. So this is the sales pitch of where I work. Grand Canyon University is in Phoenix. You've got great weather in February and you've got a really nice campus. So you get recognized quality when you come to a university. So if you graduate from your state technical college and an accredited school, everyone's going to recognize that it's valuable. Uh, so make sure that you get something that's a good name brand. Uh, check out your community colleges nearby. These schools are two years generally, and they have a track for the kind of interest that you're in. So if you're into web development, or if you're into automotive, or if you're into some kind of an industrial technology, they're probably going to offer you a pretty focused idea. Now it's relatively cheap. So I'm thinking that on average, you can spend about $1,000 a year, maybe 2000 around where I live. And for most people, that is covered easily by your Pell Grant. So if you're a low-income person in the United States, the government will literally give you five to $6,000 free, and you can spend that money on a community college and still probably have a few thousand dollars left over. So community colleges are a really good deal. They also transfer to the university. So if your two-year degree doesn't succeed in getting you a job, then keep going. You can probably transfer those credits. And so it's a great place to start with little investment. So I'm going to have another video which is about how you can get a college degree for absolutely free if you know how to do the system. So check that out if you're interested in some free tuition. So whatever mode of learning you choose, you should have the results that look like this. You should have something that you can demonstrate your skills with. So some project that works. This is the way to demonstrate to employers that you are valuable to them. So if all you have is a GPA number, a grade point average number, and a bunch of courses listed, they really don't know if you can practically do the work that they want you to do. So make sure that when you're done, you have a website, a mobile app, a robot, or some kind of a project that demonstrates that you can apply your knowledge to a real world situation. This is very relatable to the work that you're going to be hired to do. And so if you join a program and you don't have some kind of a website or project to show, then you really didn't get what you came for. So you need to be able to explain yourself to employers in a very short time what you can do and explain how you did it. And this makes your interviews go really well because all of the technical terms that are used in resumes and in job interviews should come up in the context of a project that you designed. You tell them how you designed it, what difficulties you encountered, how you decided on the different tools that you used, and then finally, how well it works. And so a project speaks like a piece of art. It's a project that is worth a thousand words. Now let's talk about where I would begin if you were in my specialty. So a lot of the work that I teach at the university is about web development and security and things that surround that. So where would you go if you wanted to get into that track? So web design is one way. Programming languages is kind of the step two. And then thirdly, we have to save our data somewhere. And so this full stack course is really the track that we try to follow when we're preparing students to work in the real world. So the languages that you might want to pick up first are HTML. And closely associated with that is CSS. Some of the programming languages that go in the middle here 
are from Java, C Sharp, C++, Python, PHP, JavaScript. You don't have to learn all of these, but you need to have at least one of them to make your application more dynamic and make it work. And then finally, you have to have some kind of a way to store data. So if you're taking invoices from an Amazon website, for instance, that all has to go somewhere and it's usually a database. So SQL or SQL is the language that most databases work with in uh, the traditional sense. So if you want a checklist of where you should begin to learn, you pick one of these languages and then you kind of grow into the others. So where is the easy place to start? Well, web development and web design starts with this idea of HTML. This is what the code looks like. So take a look on the left here. Can you see the markup languages? We have these brackets and little descriptors be around them. And so this language translates directly into a web page. And you can see that some things are bold and some things are larger. So you could probably learn HTML in a week. It's not too hard to learn. Also associated with that is the design language called CSS. So CSS is a name for cascading style sheets. And you can see the code here on the left. At the top, we have a bracket called style. And we're highlighting the H1 area, which is the headline. And then we have another class called a box. And that box has a gray background, it has a border, and it has a rounded edge. And so this is the description of a design language. So you could probably pick this language up in a couple more weeks of working with it. And you'll have very nice looking websites. However, they're just static. And so what we want to learn next is a programming language. So a programming language is going to be like this one here. This is Python. And so Python is famous for being an easy language to pick up for beginners. For many people, it's their first experience with programming. And the reason why people like it is because of its simplicity. So you can see on this example that we're trying to print somebody's name. So that's me, I'm Shad, and I want to print, hello Shad. And so that's the syntax of what we would have to type to make the code work. Notice it's just in a black box. There's no application framework. There's no uh, nice little Windows app. There's no web page here. This is just the logic that runs most websites and it doesn't look very pretty or fancy, but it's a great way to learn how to code. So those are some of the tools that you're going to have to work with. But once again, which one do I pick first? How do I start? So let's compare which one's easier. So web design is the HTML idea. It's, it's easy to learn, it's very visual, you get quick results, and it's unfortunately static. You can't really do much with it other than look at it. However, if you get into programming languages, then you can start to add some dynamic character to it. You can make websites responsive. You can, play, you can create give games, you can create storefronts, and you can create management systems so that you can book appointments with people or make a social media app. And so programming languages are what make your uh, applications come alive. And so web design is a good place to start, but then you're probably going to have to learn the programming languages too to make something useful. So let's talk about the best languages that a beginner might want to choose. These are simple, these give you quick results. So I would recommend two different languages, Python and C Sharp. So Python, as I mentioned, is famous for being quite simple. The syntax is easy to grasp. There's not a lot of complex setup to make it work. C Sharp, on the other hand, is what I would recommend for most students because you can start right away with graphical user interface applications. What I mean is something that runs on Windows. You get a, a form that you can uh, click on items. There's buttons, there's pictures, there's text fields, there's data entry and things like that. And so you're much better off if you can see the results rather than just see a bunch of text in a black box. C Sharp is a tool that I've used with beginning high school students and we get great results where we can create uh, visual programs and concentrate also on the logic that goes behind them. So what programming languages do you want to use in the long run? If you are a professional programmer, what are you likely to use? Well, here's a list of nine that are really common. And so you can see that Python, C Sharp, and Java are right at the top. And then close behind those are the other languages down below. Now, some of these have specialties. So you might be involved with C++ and C if you're an engineer. And you're going to choose Kotlin and Swift if you are probably into mobile application development. But if you are an expert in any one of these languages, you're probably ready for a job and you'll be hireable very soon. So if you're not sure where to start yet, then why don't you just check out the rest of the videos on my channel and pick something up, whether it's web development or straight programming or mobile apps. I'm here to help you, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in class.
Thanks for watching and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos.